Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for staying for the last <coughs> session on Friday. Um, so I will start with a more classical object, the harmonic measure. So, OK, so given a bounded domain and uh, a Brownian motion starting from a point inside the domain would eventually uh, hit the boundary. OK, and the harmonic measure just captures the likelihood of where in the domain the Brownian traveler is going to end up with. So that point of view is intuitive, but the more useful for our study is to look at a harmonic measure from this analytic point of view. So suppose f is a function on the boundary, and then we want to study its harmonic extension satisfying this uh, PDEs. Then it turns out that harmonic measure gives this nice representation formula for the solution. So the solution can be expressed as the integral of the boundary function against the harmonic measure. So similarly, we can define the elliptic measure by looking at the PDE with respect to a general elliptic operator of this form. Okay. So let me give you an example of a harmonic measure, which is just a unit ball. Uh, so in that case, you can, you can imagine that a uh, Brownian traveler starting from the center is going to be equally distributed on a boundary. Another example is a snowflake, which looks like this. Um, so if you start from the center, uh, it turns out that harmonic measure would only see sets that has zero measure. It's going to be end up very deep in the end. So we'll see this better in the next slide. OK, so suppose we're in a plane, and for a simply connected domain, bounded by a curve with a finite curve length. Uh, it, the harmonic measure and the curve length has this nice absolute continuity relationship, which just means that uh, a boundary set has zero curve length if and only if it's not seen by the Brownian traveler. And if we remove this finite curve length assumption, we, we have this decomposition of the boundary points. So harmonic measure sees those two types of points. The first type is inner tangent boundary point. As the name suggests, it has inner tangents. And on those points, the behavior of harmonic things are very nice. Okay. The second type of points are twist points, which are boundary point x such that when we approach the point uh, from the interior, we need to turn counterclockwise infinitely many times and also uh, clockwise infinitely many times. So that, that's why uh, that justifies the name twist points. It turns out that in the case of the snowflake, we only see these twist points. And these are when things become very singular. OK, in higher dimensions, the analog of the previous uh, Ries theorem is not true. So there exists a topological ball whose boundary is rectifiable and has finite curve, uh, has finite surface area. However, the harmonic measure and the surface measure are mutually, are not absolutely continuous with each other. So by rectifiable, it just means the boundary can be considered as a countable union of uh, C1 submanifold modulo a set of measure zero. So that just means we need more geometric assumption to guarantee nice behavior of harmonic measure in higher dimensions. Uh, so a broad question would be, what are the minimum geometric assumptions to get guarantee nice behavior of the har harmonic or elliptic measures? So in fact, uh, so there are some results. Uh, so for example, when the domain leaves on top of a Lipschitz graph, we have this nice behavior. Uh, and when the domain is an NTA domain with our first regular boundary, we have this nice behavior. Uh, this is there are still some work ongoing, uh, but I'll skip those. People also study this problem from the other point of view. So suppose we have nice behavior of the harmonic measure, then what can we say about the property of the boundary? So it tr turns out that if we have this behavior, then the boundary is rectifiable. As I said, it's countable union of uh, you can think of C1 manifold or Lipschitz graph, depending on where you come from. Um, OK. So this, in some sense, gives you a necessary geometric assumption. 
So, but there are many open questions remains. For example, it would be nice to characterize the boundary points from the point of view of harmonic measure. So for different types of boundary point, what are, what are the, how big is the harmonic measure uh, on that point with size r? So when we come to elliptic measures, the situation is more delicate. Even if the domain is very nice, a uh, unit ball, but there are still elliptic matrix which are continuous all the way to the boundary and even C infinity on the interior. However, the corresponding elliptic measure is singular. So you can imagine the problem happens when the elliptic matrix have high oscillation as we move closer and closer to the boundary. So there's a nice characterization of how, how big the singular we can afford. Uh, this is raised by Koenig and Pfeiffer. So the first condition just tells us the gradient of the matrix should scale like one over the distance to the boundary. And the second condition seems complicated, but it gives us a quantitative way of stating how small this thing needs to be as we approach closer and closer to the boundary so that this thing is integrable. Okay. And we give a, a con converse result to that. Uh, it tells us that the, this types of uh, elliptic matrix are the right ones to study. So in fact, um, the behavior harmonic measure is also stable in some sense under this perturbation. So if two elliptic matrix, their difference satisfy some type of, uh, uh, this type of uh, Carlson measure condition, then the behavior would be, uh, would be preserved. Okay, so some open questions. We, we don't know that, so suppose we're given a domain with a terrible boundary. Is it possible at all to construct an elliptic matrix that carefully leads the way of the Brownian traveler to better target the boundary so that it sees all portions equally in some sense? We don't know the answer to this. For now, we only know for this specific uh, type, uh, this specific class of elliptic matrix, the answer is no, even though it's very general, but still we don't know uh, for, for any el uniformly elliptic matrix, is it possible? Okay. In the same spirit, people also <coughs> study elliptic measures of lower dimensional sets. Uh, so we know that Brownian motion doesn't see sets of co-dimension greater than two. In other words, harmonic fun um, sets of lower dimensions is, not, is removable from the point of view of harmonic functions. So how, therefore, so to capture sets of dimension less than uh, dimension less than n minus two, uh, David Feneri and Mevarada they study elliptic measures, but with degenerate elliptic matrix, where the homogeneity is like this. So here, d is the dimension of the boundary leaving in R n. What do you mean by dimension? Dimension. Yes, uh, in terms of Hausdorff dimension. Yeah, uh, when I look at the D-dimensional Hausdorff measure, yeah. Okay, we want to know, is it true that for some class of operator satisfy this homogeneity, the nice behavior of the elliptic measure corresponds to the rectifiability of the boundary? So we have some uh, partial results in this direction, uh, but However, it was also realized that for a very specific chosen uh, matrix, in fact, no matter how bad the geometry of the boundary is, the behavior of the elliptic measure is always very nice. So in some sense, it means that this, this choice of elliptic matrix is, mollifies out the, the singularity of the boundary. So we want to understand is there any better way of choosing this matrix so, it, so that it doesn't blur out the fine structure of the boundary set so that we can still capture the structure of the boundary set? Okay, uh, with that, I end my talk and thank you everyone.